Okay, game three, Kasparov White, d4 again, and the same defence by Karpov, so this bishop e7. So consistency of, of opening strategy and choice. Uh, after e3, bishop d6. So white took on d6 and played c takes d5. So e takes, bishop d3, knight e7. Kasparov played f3 again. And Kasparov this time didn't play b6, he played knight f5. So different plans are starting to emerge here. Kasparov played queen d2, and now we have queen h6. So probing e3, how is white going to defend this? If he plays king f2, um, I'm not sure immediately if that's terrible. Maybe queen h4 actually it is terrible, because knight takes g3 and queen takes h1. And, and if, if king f1, there's still knight g3. So actually, yeah, queen h4. So white gives up actually the, the light squared bishop against this um, pressure. And now plays knight g e2. Karpov played, played knight a6. Castle's queen side looks a bit um, scary to castle queen side, but there's no concrete um, threat apart from knight b4, maybe, is, is dangerous. Uh, but maybe that's just parried with knight f4. Mind you, then g5, that's interesting to consider what happens after knight b4. Hmm, let's actually have a look here. I'll just check. With Ribka, because that's an important question. Oh, just e4. Sorry, just being silly. Just e4, and white's fine. Okay, turn off Ribka. So g g. Uh, sorry, after castles queenside by black. So both sides casting queenside. Now g4, and now h4. So again, gaining a bit of space on the king side. Knight f4, putting a bit of pressure on d5, trying to prevent maybe black from playing c5. Rook h e1, preparing the move e4 to gain more space in the centre. Maybe a pawn wedge on e5 is the idea. So h6, maybe preparing g5. Knight d3, eyeing the dark squares. f6. Now h5, putting a sort of clamp on the light squares. Now a3, potentially the idea of b4, just to make sure this knight hasn't got any major opportunities. But the knight's rerouting anyway. So queen f2, maybe the queen's going to be useful on this diagonal after e4, or the queen could even come out to h4, or um, or, or generally um, maybe double up rooks even, rook e2, rook e1. So bishop c8, king b1, b6, king a1, so the king's safely tucked in the corner before white plays anything active. Now knight f4, so the knight's, knight's eyeing g6. Uh, Karpov offers an exchange of knights, which is rejected with knight g6. Now c5. So here, knight h4, holding on to, to d4, not wanting to play d takes c5 for the moment. Again, Karpov uh, reduces the tension in the center, and he has the idea of knight f4, though, to pounce on that f4 square. Does knight f5 though, queen c7, maybe it's starting to get a little bit tricky. So queen d2, exchange of, of rooks, rook d7. Now rook e3, this is a nice move because there's the idea now maybe queen e1 to infiltrate with rook e8 or even just pin that knight you know, to, to the queen with queen g3. So king b7, b3. Seemingly creating a weakness, but you know maybe King B2 to cover that C3 square is coming up as it does now. King B2. So A4. So is White tied down a bit? I mean his rook's covering C3 at the moment. So what's the idea of A4? Well, we're about to see now. Knight A2. So the knight can come maybe to B4. So Queen D7, Knight B4 to try and win that knight square bishop, but it escapes on F1. But here. It's starting to get a bit tricky tactically for black. Queen e1. So hitting both knight and bishop. So has Karpov blundered? I think he's worse now after this. After a5, Kasparov takes, plays rook e7. The, the problem is b4 and f1 remain kind of fault. 
so Kasparov simply exchanges off rooks and here he doesn't want to take the bishop because I think there's a perpetual check with queen c3 check and um, queen takes b3 it will, it will be complicated as you can then another check and then b3 will be quite kind of dangerous so the safest thing to do is not to win the bishop just to win that pawn instead which he does and now this ending is looking a bit dire so after queen f8 um, Kasparov has got you know able to munch these pawns if he wants but he doesn't actually he plays something even better he plays just knight d6 so after king c6 now knight b5 so the king's a bit in trouble here with all these checks as we're about to see but he allows one check the king can go to a3 there's no more checks because the knight's covering the d6 square so bishop takes g4 but now white starts checking and winning lots of pawns so check check d5 drops and now he's going to win g7 and with this um, either Karpov resigned or he ran out of time I'm not totally sure um, let's look at sorry I'm, I'm not completely sure but uh, I think White oh White's winning the bishop anyway it's check and winning the bishop so I assume Karpov resigned here so let's have a quick look in overview and summary so um, you know they're, they're consistently playing the same sort of opening so it is, it is becoming a celebration of um, that classic match which was um, virtually the same opening played over and over again with slight variations they're kind of mimicking you know the match 25 years ago um, but you know this is a lot more ex excitingly uh, fast paced five minute chess so the king was tucked away and off the c5 it seems I don't think Karpov is, is scoring very well with this um, reduction in tension in the center with the fixed pawn on d4 um, it seems Kasparov is, is able to take control of the position later once that centre becomes fixed uh, well as a generalisation but rook e6 here yeah was just um, is just forcibly winning a key pawn now uh, so avoiding the complications of queen takes f1 and this ending with the king uh, being able to be uh, checked actually just winning a piece in the end so because of the checks winning the bishop hope you enjoyed that that was a bit more exciting a bit more fight from both sides than the previous uh, five-minute game. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.